delicate, like a little flower. I'm not gonna tell you what I do, give a couple girls flowers. Meanwhile, back at the plot. All right, it's real honesty with John Ripplin. And the Durbinator. Yes. So, this is 10 bold predictions for WWE in 2019. You have a few. I, I do have a few. Ours mixes together quite a bit, so yeah. there's a few that I've got in mind. Which is fine. So we're just gonna, we'll, we'll basically just go back and forth here. It's kind of like when we did the, what we did some of the end of year videos. About the, the best matches. matches. Yeah, the best yeah. matches. So, yeah, so we're gonna start off, you wanna start off? Yeah, yeah. Um, my current top prediction, at the top of my list and at the top of my thoughts, Drew McIntyre getting the Universal title at WrestleMania by decimating Brock Lesnar. Has to happen. Yeah. It has to. Because we don't need Brock anymore. We need to establish a new guy. We don't know if Roman's going to come back. Drew McIntyre is such a presence. Yeah. He, he he makes you want to watch more of him. Mm -hmm. Keep your minds out. He also makes folks. you want to watch someone actually be able to beat him. Yeah. And he's good at that. Like, I mean... Considering where he was in 2014 and where and how he was even a year later on the Indies, my God. Yeah. And he's transformed himself 100%. So now we get to a couple of my predictions. <laughs> I'm just waiting for, the, by the end of the year, where Heath Slater comes up the same size as Gender and Drew. <laughs> and Slater suddenly wins a universal title. What did you do, eat Rhino? He <laughs> ate his kids. Ugh. So, we'll go, with the, <laughs> we'll go with a couple of mine, and then we'll go back to one of yours, since you have four and I got ten. So, number ten, Sonya will beat Oscar for the women's title, SmackDown women's title. I would like to see that. I they, will, they have a budding rivalry that's going on. Um, John, stop that. Um, and the fact that Sonya is frequently compared to Oscar, and not just by commentary, but yeah. in the matches themselves, it's always by a hair. Just by a hair. Which means that at some point, somebody's going to be taking the title. Well, by that virtue, they'll probably give it to Mandy Rose instead. Right. But but she's going to get screwed over by Mandy. But Sonya who winning wins, like women's money in the bank. True. I actually have somebody else doing that. But Sonya beating Oscar, it doesn't even have to be a mania. You could have it go to SummerSlam. You could have give Oscar a long title reign and have Sonya pursue her, and something like that. And mm -hmm. then you get Sonya Mandy feud after that. Um, nothing against Asuka, but it's like, you don't need to give her a, a 500 day long title reign. But yeah. something through Mania to that, but I have Sonya beating Asuka for the women's title. And number nine, I have EC3 winning the universal title this year. Yes. Because Drew will win it at Mania. I think we can all agree that needs to happen. <coughs> EC3 either wins it at SummerSlam or Survivor Series. I'd say Survivor Series. Let's give Drew a nice long run of the title. But Survivor Series, and then I got a prediction here that I'm going to throw in at some point, or a bold prediction, that I'll throw in about who's going to take the title from EC3 soon after. You don't need to give him a long run, but we'll go back to one of yours. Ah, uh, yes. Uh, the Revival will leave for uh, All Elite Wrestling. Um, and not just because, oh, I'm so hyped for All Elite Wrestling, but the potential for the Revival to make a lot of money, especially because they've got a billionaire backer for AEW. Um, they could afford this. And also, they want to face the Young Bucks. Yeah. Um, it's the match that everyone wants to see. I wouldn't be surprised to see them at Double or Nothing. That's a good point. I mean, at this at this juncture, and we're recording this before, Ross, so who knows? The Revival could win the titles tonight. That doesn't mean yeah. anything. If they're... If they're Contracts are up right after Mania. They may decide to leave. I know one of them has kids. Maybe but I think Dawson does. But <laughs> the whole point is it gives them a far easier schedule. Yeah. And uh, wrestling in Jacksonville might prove a little bit better for their Southern style wrestling. Right. And even if they just tour Florida and like Georgia and Alabama, even though you don't want to go to Alabama. And sorry if any of you live in Alabama, but nobody wants to go there. Yeah. But. Like, I got family in Georgia, I got family in Florida, I do not have family in Alabama. Yeah, that kind of sounds about right. <laughs> but, yeah, I agree with you. The yeah. Bible will go. They have to. But, let's get to two more of mine. And then we'll do two more of yours. Yes. Because I'm going to say, I, I think you're going to agree with a lot of my top five, but let's do two more of mine. Undertaker will finally retire. For the love of Christ, Please. Yes. Let the dead man rest in peace, not die. Want to have him alive for a yeah. while. Yes, it just... He shouldn't have been wrestling this year. No, I mean, he shouldn't well, have been wrestling last year. I mean, well, him beating Cena, and Cena being very excited about it... 
It should have stopped when Roman Reigns retired him. <laughs> it should have. To be fair, I think it should have stopped when Brock retired him. Yeah, when or he beat, beat up the street. <laughs> because at that point, he faced Bray in a squash. He faced Shane McMahon in a 30-minute Hell in a Cell match. Because that was, be and that was before Shane McMahon became the best in the world. Yeah. Uh, but wasn't he always the best in the world? I, you know, he may have been. Right. Detroit agreed that he was the best. No. Um, Undertaker has to retire, though. That that DX Brothers of Destruction match was a, an abortion. And then one more. Ruby Riot will win Money in the Bank. Hmm. They have beaten her and the Riot Squad to powder. Give Ruby something. If you want to have somebody take it from Becky, if they have Becky versus Ronda at Mania. She has a built-in auto win, not just in having the money in the bank, but in also having the Riot Squad with her, who can beat down whoever is left in the ring. Ruby walks in comfortably, cashes in her money in the bank, and pins for the win. And here's another idea. Say, you know, the women's tag team titles. Yeah. You know, they end up having... Who's to say Liv and Sarah couldn't hold them by that point? Mm -hmm. You know, granted, you might have to hot potato them around to a couple people, but there's really only a couple teams you can give them to. If you give them, to, if you have Sarah and Liv win them just before, say at Money in the Bank, yeah. and Ruby wins, and Ruby cashes in, then suddenly you have the Riot Squad holding respective titles. Mm -hmm. And it, it, it's something, because they need anything at this point. I think we should just rename the title so you get a 14 bolt predictions. That's true, but let's, like, yeah, let's just name it that, whatever. Yeah. Um, yeah, 14 bold predictions. There we go. We'll fix it in post. But Ruby's going to I win. can do that. Yeah, I know you can. You're, you're really good about that. I can that. fix a lot of things in post, John. Yeah. Like my ineptness? Sure. Yeah, let's go with that. <laughs> but Ruby Rye will win money in the bank. That's what I have. Let's go to your last two. Ah, yes. Uh, mine is similar to one of your later ones, but it's Undisputed Era gets called up at SummerSlam. Um, it'll be around the right time for that. They'll run their course through NXT. They'll probably leave out on a high, losing to a newer tag team. Maybe Adrian Jaoud and Cesar Bononi actually have a tag team match again. Oh God, Brian, I forgot about that. Uh, I would like to see Adrian Jaoud do some more matches. Yeah, he was really good. Um, dude's got a killer He's been kicked there. He but, does. He yeah. Does. Um, anyway, uh, Undisputed Era gets called up, starts a feud with uh, the Good Brothers and AJ Styles, perhaps. They go SmackDown, sure. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Although, I would say Adam Cole would fit right in at Raw, but the problem is, is that Kyle O'Reilly and Bobby Fish and Roderick Strong, they're workhorses. They, they belong on SmackDown. Yeah, so maybe you could split them up in a year or so. That would be dangerous to do that. Yeah, not not to the Undisputed Era. I, I, I would say they're greater than the sum of their parts, even though their parts are pretty damn good. Yeah, I mean, you could have three together. I mean, but Cole is the figurehead. Cole would be the one to break out of the group. Mm -hmm. But I agree with you. I mean, because it would be two years since they debuted. Because yeah. they debuted to take over Brooklyn 3 last year. Yeah, I mean, and uh, Roderick Strong uh, joined their group, betraying Pete Dunn. Because that worked out really well. I mean, to be fair, he's tag team champion, but he, yeah. he, got, he got his ass beat. Yeah. But I agree with you. And they're, if they get called up to Raw, they're going to fucking dominate Raw. Oh, yeah. They're going to they're gonna lose in their first week. Yes, like, exactly. Like Sanity did. AOP. P. Oh, God. Right. Okay, let's go with your last one. Uh, my last one is probably the most important one. Vince McMahon retires at the, at the end of the year. And I don't just say this because I want him to retire. I'm saying this because XFL is just around the river bend. That, coming in 2020, I believe? Yes. So, Leaving Vince McMahon will not have the time for Raw or SmackDown. This is going to end up being Triple H's show. Oh, uh, I hope it becomes Triple H's show and not, you know, Ste Stephanie McMahon or the best in the world. Which, to be fair, Shane McMahon, he's a good guy, so... Yeah, but he is also the best in the world. Yeah. Um, I'd say Triple H could do a lot. He's done a lot for 205 Live. He has, and you also have William Regal, who's good at scouting talent. They have a good creative team in NXT. There's a lot of agents. You could utilize more of the agents and maybe not have Road Dog book SmackDown. 
Yeah. He would book SmackDown. So. Probably. Um, but no, I, I think it's about time for Vince to retire. Um, it's going to run its course and he's either going to die at the job or work on the XFL. And I don't see him working primarily for WWE in 2020. Yeah, I mean, until the XFL flames out in 2021. Yeah. Which it will. <laughs> Probably. But but by that time, Triple H will be like, nope, nope, this is <laughs> no. my product now. Now, I have this, so. By the power of my almighty schnoz. <laughs> the schnozberries taste like schnozberries. So, let's get to some more predictions. This is one that I think you want to see happen. Mustafa Ali wins the WWE Championship. Yes, I initially had five, but when I saw that was on his list, I was like, oh, yeah. Well, yeah. Because we agree on that one, so it's basically the same. Mustafa Ali is a goddamn hero. <laughs> I want Andrade Cien almost to win the WWE title, but I don't think they're going to do that. I think uh, Andrade is likely going to be feuding with Mustafa Ali after he does win it. Um, I don't see it happening at, like, WrestleMania, but I see it happening more along the lines at SummerSlam that Mustafa Ali wins it. Right. And it would be tremendous to see. Yeah. Because Ali, like you said, is a hero. He, I would not argue with him getting it at WrestleMania. I just think it might be too soon for the rest of the people who haven't watched him 205 Live. Right. You know, aside from the 80,000 usual viewers that Smack uh, that 205 Live gets. And 80, You should 000, go watch 205 Live. You should. 80,000 is unfortunately being generous. Yeah. Um, he does great reviews at 205 Live, by the way. Check those out. So, but yeah, I have to have so much more. They do. They do. wait. You do or two hundred five live? To, okay. Um, Even John Cena loves two hundred five live. He he does. He does. So Mustafa Ali though will win the WWE title, and then many pretty much the same thing of piggybacking off of one of yours about the revival. Many talents will leave for a New Japan or AEW. I see. I could see some women leaving for All Elite Wrestling if they're willing to offer a good schedule. Now, some women. I don't know about all of them, but I, mean, I could. I could also see uh, Cody Rhodes not hiring too many of the Bullet Club. And he would hire Gallows and Anderson if they yes. became available because of their experience. Yes. Guys like Balor, guys like Styles, they ain't leaving. They ain't leaving yeah. WWE. They get too much money, and. They're happy where they are. Yeah. I mean, and they're, again, they're getting too much money. The Revival will leave. I think guys like Ty Dillinger and Zack Ryder could. Uh, I, I'd say Zack Ryder more likely uh, because Zack Ryder is good friends with Cody. Yeah. And even, I mean, even though Cody thinks he's a fake Star Wars fan. This is true. <laughs> yeah, but, I mean, what might hold Ryder in there, though, is his girlfriend did just get hired. Mm -hmm. But you could see, like, a tag team. like those. But, I mean, she's done NXT right now. She could always just... She could, but the Ely brothers, the two twin black guys that got fired from, or got released from WWE. For tell, whatever reason. I think one of them was injured, and then they recovered, and they decided they didn't have anything to do for him, but, or to, <coughs> for him to do. But they could be somebody you could mold, and they could be a young, up-and-coming team and stuff like that. But um, as far as talents that are there, tell me that there aren't so many... I mean, the Colognes, not that the Colognes would be great. They, it'd be a fresh they, coat they'd of paint. Be a, they'd be a great mid-card tag team. Yeah, they would be. Um, the Singh Brothers. Singh Brothers, definitely. I don't, um, I don't envision Ginger Mahal getting hired by AEW anytime soon. Tony Nese, if he wanted to leave, even though I think to, even though I think WWE would be bad to release him, yeah. he would be very, very good in their upper mid-card. I'd say Tony Nese is probably going to end up going to SmackDown as well right. at some point. He is, he's become so much bigger than he was just a year ago. And I mean, yeah. like in terms of size, personality wise, yeah. his presence in the ring is God damn ability to put on on what I would consider the five star match with uh, Johnny Gargano. Yeah. Just out of nowhere. It was yeah. Just literally added. No, it was a great thing. He is the premier <laughs> athlete in both name and ability. There are some, and there is even some uh, some that are in the performance center that may get fed up to some in NXT UK mm -hmm. that are living in the states, perhaps, on NXT and NXT UK that may get frustrated and leave. AEW could partner with some of those promotions in the UK and not be like WWE. I'm just mm -hmm. saying there, there's a lot of potential there, but a lot of talents are gonna. Uh, it could be at least ten or more yeah. that will leave WWE. To go to New Japan and and or AEW. Cody Rhodes would pace it out though, most likely. 
Yeah. Uh, I mean, he's a smart guy. He knows he can't just bring in all the talent in the world no. and hope things succeed. He needs to prove that it can succeed before he hires more people in. So, true. Uh, but we'll see some defections, but I don't think it's going to be like a mass exodus. I would not be surprised to see Apollo Crews go. Yeah, no kidding. I mean, him, Chad Gable. I think Chad Gable is right at home. Um, they're gearing him up for something soon. I hope you're right. I hope That's, you're right. That was probably the point of him working with Bobby Roode. Is Bobby Roode's more promo-driven guy. And true. having him work, having Chad Gable work with Bobby Roode means he gets more opportunities to do promos. That's true. It just... Um, and kind of work on his presence in the ring with people. Right. I mean, aside from the fact that his suplexes can kill people. Right. But, you know... I, I think Chad is happy where he's at. Hopefully. I mean, they just, they need to, they, he needs to Have you to seen be, the level of enthusiasm he brings to that Bobby Roode thing? Yeah. And he's also <laughs> being paid to do it. I mean, I'm just saying. Um, I got Velveteen Dream being called up after SummerSlam. Yeah. And this, he's not going to win the title. He's not going to win it. He, <sighs> they need to call him up to SmackDown. He's going to be called up to Raw. Because that's a character-driven show. And he is a character. And he will also get just brutally buried on Raw. Uh, I think they're going to start him off, as most of the NXT call-ups go, they got to do their time on the main roster, essentially, which is they got to lose for a little bit and completely get all their momentum killed before they can be built back again in Vince's image. Yeah, but that's dumb. So, if, for instance, Vince decides to step back and let Triple H take over, Velveteen Dream would stand a greater chance of seeing an Intercontinental title win by the end of the year. Yes. Um... He would he he would be over. He would yeah. absolutely be over. If he goes to SmackDown, we'd likely see a US champion run by the end of the year. Yeah. But Velveteen Dream will be called up. Now, I have a bold one. I don't know if it's gonna happen, but let's just see. Chomp and Gargano will win tag team gold on the first night being called up on the main roster. It will uh, be and watch it be against the Usos. Someone's gotta sign up the crowd. DIY! <laughs> But that what? Just imagine it. If like, say, the Usos or somebody are tag team, yeah. or are they they I would mean, need to be called up to SmackDown. They though. would need to be because especially because they're smaller, smaller guys and they can wrestle. Yeah. Um, not the people at <laughs> Raw can't wrestle, but it's much more character driven. But say it's against the Usos and this guy's up and they attack the Usos and they beat them up and then they get a match with them because the Usos want to face them and then DIY beats them and then DIY and then it's a heel DIY winning the tag titles and tell me that doesn't sound good. <laughs> that doesn't sound good. Okay. I'm sorry, you asked me to tell you. I, I don't did, believe I, it. I don't, I, but, I, you know. I, I, di I did ask. I did ask for that. But that's what's going to happen. Quite literally. I mean, I have Ciampa and Gargano winning Tag Team Gold on their first night being called up. And then I have something piggybacking off uh, the Undisputed Era. Undisputed Era will be called up after SummerSlam. Well, and we'll... four guys. Yeah. Pretty easy to piggyback off of. Yeah. I asked for that one. Um, they will be called up and will win gold by the end of the year. Because based off the EC3 Universal title win, he will beat... Drew McIntyre. Yeah. As Survivor Series. And then he will be attacked by the Undisputed Era. And who will face him? Adam Cole. So Adam Cole will face EC3 at TLC or whatever the December pay-per-view is. They, the they, they did build a full circle kind of story with them, though, with EC3 taking on the Undisputed Era and not losing as all of the Undisputed Era try to interfere in a match. Yeah, right. I remember that. That was, that was pretty damn cool. Yeah. But... I have Adam Cole being Universal Champion by the end of the year. Why not? Yeah. I mean, and you could have Strong and O'Reilly win Tag Team Gold. Sorry, Bobby Fish, but you're probably going to be used with the Freebird rule because you're kind of the Michael Hayes of the group even though you're a great wrestler. Yeah, you are a terrific wrestler and you're part of the original pair yeah. of, what was it, Red Dragon? Red Dragon, yeah. yeah Red Dragon. I mean, and, he, no, he's great. I'm just saying of all the people he's... Probably the most expendable yeah, he's in also, Vince's eyes. He's also, I think, the oldest of the he's group. He's 37, 38. Yeah. He can still wrestle really, really oh, yeah. good. Um, but Roderick Strong and O'Reilly will win the Raw Tag Team titles by the end of the year. I could picture a feud between Roderick Strong and Bobby Fish occurring where uh, Roderick Strong gets kicked out of the group. Hmm. Yeah, that would be fair because Strong... It would be more emotional if it was Bobby Fish getting kicked out of the group, but I... More likely see Roderick Strong going to SmackDown after getting kicked out. 
and putting on some classics there. And also, Bobby Fitt, if they came... Roderick Strong versus Daniel Bryan. Roderick Strong versus Mustafa Ali. Yeah. Roderick Strong versus Randy Orton. Mm. Roderick Strong versus Jeff Hardy. Yeah. And Jeff Hardy will not lose unless he's focused. <laughs> so. And now Roderick Strong versus Mojo. <laughs> <laughs> Messiah, Messiah the Backbreaker versus the guy that just likes to choke people out and yell Wendy a lot. Yeah, you're a choke artist! <laughs> Which is funny because Samoa Joe is the opposite of. Right. Well, no, he didn't he doesn't, he doesn't choke up on the mic. He doesn't, that's true. So now I have the boldest prediction. The women will main event three of the main... No, no, it looks more like italics. Yes, I know. <sighs> I asked for that. Um... <laughs> Three, the women will main event three of the big four pay-per-views. Mania, SummerSlam, and Survivor Series. Survivor Series, uh, well, actually, Mania first. It'll be Becky versus uh, Ronda. Mm -hmm. Unless they slot Charlotte in there. You will then get up... Uh, yeah, but you'll get Becky, Charlotte, and um, Ronda at SummerSlam. Or ah, some, or some variety. Yeah, that's a much better idea. You'll get, you'll get them there at SummerSlam. But then, Becky will end up losing the title at SummerSlam after a Ruby Cashin. And you will get... The four horsewomen versus four horsewomen at Survivor Series. Yeah, that would make sense. And uh, main Jasmine event? Duke and Marina Shafir, they're going to be probably focused more on NXT, so. But. Uh, Shane is not going to get called up until they're ready to go up. But just having them show up would just be the better idea. Mm -hmm. Just my thing, because Ronda would say, well, now I have, now I have my women with me. But that's what I think is going to happen. I think Becky versus Ronda has to main event Mania 35. The women should main event SummerSlam. The women should main event Survivor Series. Because let's be honest, the main event of Survivor Series this time, Daniel Bryan versus Lesnar, it was what it was. I got why some people liked it, but women main event would be a better call this year. Yeah. And that's what I got to say. What do you have to say? We Ducks. can't hear you. Okay, that too. We can't hear you, but leave comments. And like, share, subscribe. Our Twitter handles are in the description. You can find us on there. And it's been Real Lost with John Mithlin and... The Durbinator. We have to get ready for Raw. Yes. So we will see you later. Hold on. I'm ready. Oh, the show hasn't started yet. Chris. Oh, right. Oh, right.